There are only two miracles which Jesus worked in the Synoptic Gospels in which Jesus uses external methods and the first of these is the one which we will hear about in today's Gospel, namely the one from Mark chapter 7 verses 31 to 37 in which a deaf man with an impediment in his speech is he. And the question is, why does Jesus use external methods and what is this miracle saying to us today? Jesus is in Gentile territory in chapter 7 of the Gospel of Mark. The Gentile faith healers, the Gentile miracle workers would use external methods to heal whether it was spittle, whether it was oil, whether it was incantations, whether it was loud verbal prayers, they would use external methods, putting their fingers in the person's ears, putting their fingers in the person's eyes, putting their fingers on the tongue and so on. Now because Jesus is in Gentile territory, he uses those same methods in order that those who are watching him those who are experiencing him will understand. We have seen in so many other miracles, Jesus was able to heal only with the word. It is very clear that Jesus could have done the same in this instant and yet Jesus does not do that. What he does is he puts his fingers in the man's ears. He puts pity on his tongue because pity was considered to have healing properties and he cries out a pata which is Aramaic for be open and the man is healed. The people around would then understand the miracle in a much, much better manner than if Jesus had simply said, speak and heal. Because Jesus has done that in other contexts where he has healed deaf people and made dumb people speak in other contexts where they would understand the healing with the word. Here, however, the people would not have possibly understood his healing with only a word and so that is why he uses those external methods. This means that Jesus inculturates himself to the situation. He places himself in the shoes or sandals of those people around him and tries to use the language that they would understand. It shows the awareness of Jesus. It shows the fact that he could read the signs of his times and what was happening around him. James, in the second reading of today, is inviting us similarly to read the signs of the times but in a completely different way when he gives us the example of not simply looking at the external of a person. The church, the kingdom of God, God's reign is for every single person without distinction. However, we tend to make these distinctions between the rich and the poor. We tend to respect more the rich and we tend sometimes to look down on the poor and James issues a warning in the second reading of today when he says that if you do that, you are not part of God's kingdom. If you do that, make distinction between people based on what they have, then you are really missing the point of what Jesus came to do. Because Jesus came not to appreciate those who have and pull down those who did not have. He came to reach out to every single person. but primarily to those who did not have. So, if any distinction is to be made, it is to be made in favor of the downtrodden, it is to be made in favor of those who do not have, it is to be made in favor of the marginalized. Better, if no distinction is made at all, and if everyone is treated equally, then we are really entering into God's kingdom. And so, while Jesus 
communicates God's kingdom to people in language that they can understand, James is inviting us to do the same. And the manner which people will understand God's kingdom has come, God's reign is here, if we, as disciples of Jesus, avoid any kind of distinction, treat every single human being with the respect that everyone deserves. Will you? as a disciple of Jesus, make his kingdom known through one loving action today.